that is how you do it. Hello everyone, my name is MJ Vilches of Doodle Notes, and right now I'll be sharing to you something that I've achieved two years ago. Turning my cool looking flashlight into a lightsaber. You ready? Well, let's do this! This is actually a default thing that I'll probably be saying every time I make a visual effect tutorial, if I actually make this into a regular thing. It's actually very important whether or not you're editing a visual effect from one of your shot on your video, or just, you know, a short video like this one. One of the things you need to make sure before starting with the effect is to determine the frame rate of the raw footage and match it with the settings in Blender. Also, cut the part of the footage where you want the effect to show up. That way, when you import this to Blender, you won't have those extra frames that you won't really need. And by the way, I'm using Blender 2.79b to achieve this effect. After preparing the footage, we're now ready for step 2. In Blender, switch to Motion Tracking Layout, open up the footage, and we can start tracking. For this effect, we only need to track two points. One near the part of the prop where the lightsaber will be coming out, and one at the opposite side of the prop. This would probably be easier with a proper lightsaber prop. In my case, I track one point at the neck of my flashlight because it's contrasted and even when Blender can't track that part itself, I can easily find it and do a manual track. Plus, I've marked some points on those parts, but it's not really visible from this shot. Anyways, I tracked another point at the base of the flashlight. And one of the best things to do while tracking is to track both points at the same time to easily match the length of the prop when it goes behind something in the shot, just like this one. So yeah, if you're done with the track and satisfied with the results, head over to the Solve panel and under the Geometry settings, click Link Empty to Track. This will create empties in your viewport link to the track points. Now switch back to the default layout in Blender, set up the camera accordingly, rename the empties for easier identification. In my case, I named the point nearest to where the saber blade comes out as saber underscore tip and the point at the opposite end, saber underscore base. You can also change the empty's shape if you want. After that, you can then proceed to step 3. In the viewport, press Shift plus A and add a single bone. Using the Shift plus S method, make sure that the bone is positioned where the saber underscore tip is, or to the point nearest to where the blade will come out. And then select the bone, tab into edit mode, select the tip of the bone, and using Shift plus S method again, position the tip of the bone to where saber underscore base is. And by the way, I have a short video explaining the Shift plus S method, so if you want to know what this method is, just give it a quick watch. Anyways, after making sure that the bone is properly positioned, parent the bone to saber underscore tip, then select saber underscore base, Shift plus select the bones, and then press Control Shift C, and then select to add the stretch to constraint. Just make sure that the constraint is added to the bone and that it is influenced by saber underscore base. Also make sure that in the constraint settings, volume is set to none. After doing all that, if you brush through the timeline, you'll see that the bone is following the motion of your prop saber. If you're satisfied with how things look, you can then proceed to the next step, which is modeling the lightsaber. To create the lightsaber model, you actually only need to add a cylinder, and then scale it, add some edge loops or extrude it until it assumes the shape of the saber's laser blades. After that, just add a white shadeless material, and that's it, you have a saber blade, or a lightsaber, or, or whatever it's called. Anyways, I actually used blue here, but I changed it to white for reasons you'll know later. Next thing you need to do is to match its position the same as the saber underscore tip using the shift plus s method again, and then rotate it around until it's properly matched with the footage, and then parent it to the bone. Also, make sure under the world settings, set the horizon color or the background color to black. Now, if you change the view mode to material and brush through the timeline again, you'll see that yes, we made a lightsaber. And yeah, depending on how well you track, there may be some slight rotation issues which can easily be fixed by animating the saber mesh. But in any case, we now have a lightsaber blade nicely tracked with your footage. But we're not done yet. If your shot involves saber going behind something or someone in the footage, you'd have to do some rotoscoping which means masking out those parts to make sure that the lightsaber goes behind it. We can also do that in Blender by going back to the motion tracking layout and on the bar at the bottom corner of the motion clip editor window, click on the mode options, the ones that's saying tracking, then select mask and then after selecting that, tracking will now change to mask and then you can start rotoscoping. 
You can add points to your mask by pressing Ctrl plus click. And by pressing Ctrl plus drag, you can add curves. And then when you're done, you can close the mask by pressing Alt plus C. There will be links in the description below on tutorials how to do rotoscoping in Blender. Anyways, just make sure to add a separate mask to roto out multiple objects. In my case, I also have to mask a part of the flashlight to hide it and seamlessly connect it to the saber blade with the flashlight. You probably won't have to do this if you have a proper lightsaber prop. Anyways, if rotoscoping is complete, we are now ready for compositing. Still in Blender, switch to the compositing layout and check Use Nodes and Auto Render. Select a good frame from your footage where the lightsaber is fully shown and hit Render. Since we're using Blender's internal renderer, this will render really fast. After the render, add a movie clip node to import the footage. Then using the mix node, combine the lightsaber and the footage node by switching the blend type to add. Make sure that the saber node is at the top of the footage node. After this, pick a frame in your footage where the lightsaber goes behind another subject in the shot and then hit render. Now, we must add the mask by adding a mask node. Select the appropriate mask for the shot. If you have multiple masks, just add another mask node for each of those masks. You can combine them together using a mix node with a blend type, add, and make sure that clamp is checked. After that, go back to the mix node, now add node, combining the saber and the footage, and link the mask nodes to the factor of the add node. Blender will load up the results and might show that the mask worked on reverse. Just use an invert node to fix this, and one final setting that you can add for the mask is using a blur node to add feather. Also, don't forget to add vector blur on the lightsaber node for motion blur. At this point, we now composited the lightsaber with the footage, but it needs to look cool, which means just giving it a nice glow. And to do that, right after the saber node, add two blur nodes. On the first one, set the X and Y to 10, and on the second one, set the X and Y to 50. After the second one, add the RGB curves node, and then using mix node with a blend type add, combine the two together. Combine these nodes with the footage, hit F12, and now we have our lightsaber. Just use the RGB curves node to change the color. This is why it's important to use a white color as a base color for the lightsabers, because it's best to start with white as you change it to different colors. Anyways, took the blue value to make the lightsaber blue, red to make it red, and so on and so forth. After that, if you like, you can add a glare node to emphasize more the effect, add some lens distortion, color grade, do a final render, and voila, lightsaber effect. All done without any plugins within this free program called Blender. It would even be more sweet once 2.8 comes out. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully I added something to your Blender learning. And if you want me to try and achieve other effects using Blender, just tell me in the comments down below and let's see what we can do. That is all. My name is MJ Vilches of Toodle Notes, bringing forth awesomeness to glorify the awesome over and out.